Hey guys, it's Kat here. Today we're gonna do a very creepy makeup of Keyface, the demon from Insidious, The Last Key. If you guys have not seen this movie or any Insidious movies, they are my absolute favorite horror genre series of movies. They all connect somehow. The plot was so twisted and good. This demon has keys as fingers and opens doors that unlocks other portals. And it is so incredibly creepy. So let's try to turn into Keyface, the demon from Insidious. Oh my gosh, this is about to get creepy, but let's get started. Before we start the makeup, I just wanted to let you guys know I am not completely naked. I do have a wrap around my chest because we're gonna do some body painting in this look. But I'm just using some clips to get my hair out of the way so that I could paint my face without it getting tangled in my hair. To start this makeup look off, I am going to flatten down my eyebrows using some glue stick and powder. Usually I do more layers than this of glue stick and powder, but we are just trying to have a barrier so that we do not take away or take off our eyebrows when we are going to put on prosthetics today with all that glue. Making sure it's completely dry so that the prosade won't rip my actual eyebrow hairs out. Before getting today's prosthetic, which is from MostlyDead.com, if you have not heard of their website, they are amazing. I've been purchasing their prosthetics for years now, and I'm using a zombie foam latex full face prosthetic today from them. I am doing a layer of prosate on my face with a disposable makeup sponge, just very thinly on my actual face, making sure not to get near my eyes or near my tip of my nose where the prosthetic does not reach. And I'm also going to put the prosade on the prosthetic itself. As you can see, I'm slowly but surely putting this prosthetic on my face. You want to take your time. I usually start to adhere on the middle of my face and then work my way out to the edges, pressing and making sure that the edges do not fold in on themselves because I only have one shot to do this. If you're doing a zombie look, maybe for a cosplay or a convention or Halloween, if you do not have this prosthetic, you could definitely just do a full face of makeup and put the makeup in the same areas where I am putting them on, just on your face and not on a prosthetic like this and using similar colors, but do not use the PAX paint that I'm going to use later on your actual face because that would be very terribly hard to take off. Some of my edges did buckle, but I am going to fix that. By getting some prosade with a Q-tip and making sure to glue down the edges that feel like they're not totally adhered to my skin, make sure you do not get this prosade in your eye because that would be very dangerous and hurt. So do not put too much prosade on. Too little is better than too much in this case. You don't want this to drip near your eye. Making sure all your edges are adhered on and dry. Before fixing the edges that may have buckled a little bit, I'm getting some Bondo or Cabo patch. Also use this Prosade cream. It's great for a ridge filler, blending edges into the skin. I always use this whenever I have an edge that is just too harsh or maybe it folded in on itself, so I'm just making sure it smoothly transfers from my skin to the prosthetic mask. Once your prose cream or cabo is on, I'm gonna get some liquid latex with a red stipple sponge to stipple the edges so you don't have any rough edges that blend smoothly. Make sure that you don't get this in your eye again when you are blending your edges near your eye and blending the edges near your hairline, making sure you also don't get this on your hair because you will probably have to pull your hair out if you do. Once that's completely dry, we're gonna get some prosade with a red stipple sponge again and stipple that all over the surface of your foam prosthetic because this is gonna give it a barrier so that the latex prosthetic won't get too soggy and at the same time, the makeup will adhere to it better. It will stick. It will give it a more protective layer when you layer other makeups on just other than some rubber mask grease paint or PAX paints that we're gonna be using later. Once that is all stippled on, getting every inch of prosade on that prosthetic, I'm gonna make sure it's completely dry with the hair dryer. This really helps. Then I'm mixing three different colors of PAX paint. With those three colors mixed together, I'm gonna be stippling it on the surface of the prosthetic with a disposable makeup sponge. PAX paint has some prosade in it, so you have to work fast because this stuff dries very fast. Making sure to get a full coverage all over the prosthetic to make sure that the foam latex is not peeking through. You want that look of dead skin. 
And once that's on, we're gonna dry it with a hairdryer, making sure it's completely dry before powdering it down with translucent powder. Now it's time to color the eyes. You can get some black cream paint or a NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in black bean like I got here. You really wanna make sure you get something pigmented that covers your eyelid and something creamy so that it doesn't crease too bad. Especially aqua paints, you don't want them to get too close or near and dear to your prosthetic because they might seep through and make your foam prosthetic mushy, which you don't want. Once you have the eye sockets blackened and darkened a little bit, we are gonna get a white paint. You get some rubber mask grease paint or a cream paint with a brush very lightly dabbing that on the high points of the zombie mask prosthetic. Look at reference pictures of Key Face from Insidious, this new Last Keys movie, to really get the colors down. He has tones of like a grayish green, a lot of white, but I'm mixing different tones of this white and other colors to make sure it looks realistic. Now it's time to get some matte black eyeshadow. I got a fan brush at first to try it out to get in the creases and crevices, the wrinkles where you furl your eyebrows right above the bridge of your nose. But then I got a more detailed brush, a very tiny brush with the matte black eyeshadow to draw on wrinkles where the forehead furrows and has creases. Then I'm getting a fluffy blending brush with the matte black eyeshadow to blend out that dark black eye socket that we colored in before and making him have eye bags as well. Again, reference pictures of this demon really do help when you're painting your face. You're also blending this on your cheekbone and in the bridge of your nose. Key face has like this hollow nose bone, meaning that there's two black holes where his nose bone would be. He's kind of like half demon, half zombie, though his looks in the movie. Really making sure that eyeshadow diffuses into the white. You don't want this matte black eyeshadow to be super patchy and skip on this prosthetic. You want it to blend out nicely and not look like chocolate chip ice cream with chunks of black just thrown into the white. You want it to look like a look. Making sure to blend this matte black eyeshadow under the cheekbone and on where your laugh lines would be. I know demons don't laugh, but this one has laugh lines and we are blending the eyeshadow on the bottom jawline as well, right under those cheekbones. And we cannot forget the sides of our forehead, blending it into our hair. If you do not have burnette hair or black hair, you can definitely get a wig, but I'm just gonna use my own hair later. Getting that thin brush with the matte black eyeshadow again, doing more forehead wrinkles, and that matte black cream paint in the NYX Jumbo Pencil on her nose. Now to further the texture on this demon's face, I'm gonna get a orange stipple sponge with some alcohol paint, but if you do not have alcohol paint on hand, they are a little bit more pricey. You could definitely get some cream paint in a light gray color, or just lightly use a black cream paint to stipple on some shadows on the forehead with this alcohol paint, but switching over to a small stipple brush. I love stipple brushes with alcohol paint to give texture on any makeup look on one of the last few layers of it. And now it's time to work on the demon's mouth. I'm getting some more prose with the disposable makeup sponge, applying that to the upper lip and the bottom near my chin, below my lower lip. After that is on, I'm getting a silicone product called Third Degree. If you do not have this, you could also use gelatin. Make sure it's not scorching hot when you put it on your mouth. But this product is amazing. You use it fresh out of the kit to make like a silicone effect. I am making the gums of the demon to input some teeth later. You really wanna look at a reference picture of this. It kinda of looks like glue on your face or melting ice, but you have to work fast. Once the third degree is still tacky and not completely dry, I got some fake fingernails that I cut to look like the shapes of teeth and put that in the third degree. It should stick there very well if you place it in the third degree just right. You don't wanna stab your actual skin. Just place it in the third degree to look like teeth I even put some on the bottom part of the third degree as well. Then I'm getting some red cream paint. I mix a little bit of red and yellow from my Mayron bruise wheel of cream colors. You want that perfect tone between a yellow and a red to make the color of this demon's gums. That's what we're gonna paint on top of the third degree. 
making sure you do not paint the teeth and on the bottom jawline as well. I'm also getting some black cream paint to darken in and deepen in the corners of the laugh lines or where the white face of this demon meets the inside of his mouth and on the bottom of his chin line as well. As you can see, it's turning a little bit blue, the black cream paint, once it's reaching the white. That is because this is a different color of black than the eyeshadows and it is mixing a little bit with the white paint on the face. But we will fix that, don't worry. I'm also getting more black cream paint to deepen areas around the mouth just to make it darker and stand out. On the bottom of my chin, near my jawline and under those cheekbones, I'm also getting a thin brush to do some crack line marks from the parts of his jaws going into the face area. Now I'm getting some white cream paint with a very tiny detail brush and doing some highlight marks on the gums. You want it to look more like it's wet with moisture. That's why I decided to put some white marks and highlights to mimic it being like wet like real gums. And then I'm getting some tooth lacquer paint. This one's my favorite by Mayron. It is in their yellow tone. I'll make sure to put the exact names and everything, the details down below in the description box. On those fake fingernails that we made into our teeth, I'm just wiping it a little bit with my finger, or you can use a Q-tip to be more professional. Making sure all the teeth are completely painted before getting more white cream paint and doing some highlight marks on those teeth as well. Now with a fluffy blending brush with the matte black eyeshadow, I'm just doing more shadow on the side of my forehead. Now it is time to paint our body, make our skin glow like we have not seen the sight of the sun since this demon is so pale. I thought I had pale skin goals, but this demon takes the cake. I'm getting some gray aqua paint from Graftobian. Any aqua paint will do. I'm getting their light gray color and putting that all over my body, on my neck, chest, shoulders, just everywhere I can making sure it's completely dry before moving on to a white cream paint that still makes it look gray but a lighter gray. Making sure that layer is completely pigmented and then dried before getting a very large stippling brush with some black aqua paint and stippling on texture, grittiness, dirt, just like the demon has in the movie. He is not pure white or gray. He has like shadows and he looks wet and gross like he's been crawling through sewers. Also getting another big stipple brush with some white aqua paint to stipple on highlights. You can even use your fingertips on certain areas to make it brighter and whiter. Before getting more black aqua paint with the brush and coloring in our ears. I don't know if this demon has ears or not. So I decided to make it look like I don't have any. Reference pictures for this demon are so hard to find. I think there's only one or two pictures online and you can barely see his face. He just pops up behind people highlighting my chest area some more with some white cream paint. Now I'm just getting that jumbo eye pencil and black bean again from NYX and coloring in my waterline along with darkening in the sockets of the eye. And now it is time to take my hair down. Again, like I said, if you do not have brunette hair or darker hair, you could definitely get a wig for this, but I'm just gonna use my own hair and get some gel to put in to my hair to make it look wet and stringy like the demon from the movie. And I even got some black hairspray. It's like a color hairspray from the Halloween store because my hair has like, you know, highlights in the ends of it because I want to be super fancy and that's what I dyed my hair as. But the demon doesn't have highlights. Kissed by the sun. He has stringy, greasy, gloppy black hair. So that's why I'm coloring my hair. Just getting a fine detail brush with some black cream paint to give more details of creases and marks on my face to give him more expression. And with that, we are completely done with the demon key face from the movie Insidious Last Key. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it doesn't scare you as much as the movie scared me. I love the Insidious movies. If you guys do this makeup or any makeup from my YouTube channel, please post it on Instagram with hashtag catsketch. And if you're into effects makeup and love using prosthetics yourself, definitely check out MostlyDead.com where I got this prosthetic from. They are amazing, have a great selection. But now it is time to turn back into myself from this creepy demon. Taking off prosthetics can be very hard and harsh to your skin. I love using isopropyl mirror state. You really want to make sure you soak 
whatever cotton pad or brush in isopropyl mirror state and soak it on your skin so that it removes all the prosate and adhesives that you use for any type of makeup effects look. If you're using regular makeup without the prosthetic, you could definitely just use some regular old makeup remover, but I love using this. Then I go in with my makeup removers and then baby wipes and then showering. I'm pretty sure I still have some black cream paint in my ears. No matter how much I wash them, I feel like it's still gets stuck in there. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. Leave a comment down below on whatever character makeups from movies, TV shows, or celebrity transformations you would love to see me do on this YouTube channel in the future. I love to hear from you guys. All the products I use in this video will of course be listed down below in the description box. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!